Do we want to get, just get right into it? Just yeah. get into the post? Well, because I think we should post. start off with the worst one. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so we, we don't end on like a sour note. I want to... I want to have at least some hope. At the you you, you want to work toward Get Out and Dunker? Yeah, I want to like work toward the good. I've said it before in previous podcasts. Steven Spielberg at some point lost the thread, yeah. the Phantom Thread. He so here, I have a theory about Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he actually goes on set anymore. I, here, here's how I think a Steven Spielberg movie gets made. Do you think he's a Phantom director? Yeah. If yeah. you've ever been on set with him, please confirm or deny in the comments yeah. below. Um, he goes, this is the kind of movie I might think I might want to make, or somebody comes to him with a script, yeah. and then he reads I think the, this movie should exist in the world. He reads the script, and he goes, oh yeah, totally. And he sits down probably for five or six long pre-production meetings. Oh, I thought you were going to say for five or six long minutes. I, I, don't, I, don't think he, I don't think he spends a lot of time... Um, like like taking notes or like really going in or doing his own research. I don't think any of that's happening. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's doing any of his own legwork. I think he's doing a lot of ad-libbing and talking out loud in these meetings where yeah. he's flipping through the pages going, uh, yeah, and this would be really great, and this could be Meryl Streep. And, and someone this. else is taking notes. Yeah, yeah and he gets a, lot, he gets a few really ideas that he's really married to and yeah. really wants to make yeah. sure that they come through. And I think he's got a couple of unit directors who he's worked with for years who then go out and direct the film. Yeah. It, it reminds me a lot, uh, I don't know if you remember in the mid-90s, uh, Warner Brothers had started their own channel, yeah. and there was a lot of Steven Spielberg produced shows, which I think he just, you know, pitched something to some uh, random creative people, yeah. and was like, hey, make a show like this, make a show like this, and you got Pinky in the Brain, Freakazoid, Animaniacs. Steven Spielberg presents. It feels a lot like that's what this is. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's that would explain how he's able to make movies, like, at the frequency that he does. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, BFG just came out, like, half a year ago or something. Yeah. And then like there was the year he made like Tin Tin and War Horse like within like three months. And then he, yeah. he made a video game too, like Boom right. Blocks. <laughs> right. So I think anybody who thinks that like Ready Player One's gonna be fabulous is lying to themselves. <laughs> you know who I keep hearing from? People who really like the book and go, oh, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. It's like, no, you're optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> and you shouldn't be. Because yeah. they, they see a bunch of things in the trailer, like, oh, that's from a thing I it like. Looks like Minority yeah. Report. What did they, I, I, I don't know what they're talking about. There's, but. A, there's, a, there's a DeLorean there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, so, so, what, so what is the post about? Uh, well, the first 45 minutes to an hour okay. is a lot of farting around and having really bad dialogue about, like, you know, a news organization and another news organization down the street called New York Times mm -hmm. that you never see. You never see that one. Um, it sounds like a lot of interesting stuff is happening. Yeah, yeah. Are they like the gimbals of the situation? Yeah. Like, yeah you spend just street? a couple minutes involved with them. They, yeah, actually, it's a lot like that. It's quite, quite like that. Um, you know, there's some like real like like made for TV movie type stuff about the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. where it feels almost like low budget and crap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I like and there's there's actually literally like him like going through a computer and like the text going across his eyes. Oh and yeah, stuff. and he's reading. <laughs> he's like, all right, well, let's just for the summary, it's uh, the the release of the Pentagon Papers. Is that yeah. what it is? And. Um, you know, and whether whether or not they should publish them. That sounds super interesting. So the, they're gonna make it wicked boring. Yeah. It's, 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 to be clear, it's yeah. not Watergate. It's it's about the the general deception of the federal government to the American public about the Vietnam War. Yes. And, and and I guess Nixon was so tyrannical in his personality and the way he ran things that he kind of had a lot of the news news organizations in his pocket, and. Uh, they were all too intimidated to ever run a story about this sort of thing, especially after really damning papers like this were leaked. Yes. yes. And so, yeah, the re reporter, he gets the papers and he's yeah. scanning them and then it overlays on his face and he's reading them. It's so, it's so, so, it's so bad. so cliche, yeah. So it, like I said, I think I said during watching it, it was it felt like a Lifetime movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it had that same, the same shot, uh, the same lighting, the same quality. Oh, and by, yeah, the lighting, by the way, like there's every single room has uh, light flooding into it yeah. through the windows and the room is filled with fog. Yeah. And I said that to somebody and they were like, well, it's the 70s, it's uh, the smoke. And I'm like, no, it's cinematography. It's yeah. And don't, it's, be, it's, don't be annoying. It's kind of like how don't excuse this. all of these Spielberg movies are shot now. <laughs> yeah, Link, Lincoln and, looked exactly the same. Yeah. Cheesecloth over the lens, too. I mean, mm -hmm. really kind of just everything's, every, nothing's really sharp. You know? And th this is what I mean by when I say I think a sp Spielberg movies are canned is I think they're they're ready to go. They're like yeah. Yeah. off the assembly line. Um, to, uh, ready Mer movie one. Meryl Streep plays the owner of the Washington Post at the time who inherited it from her dead husband. Um, she and, and Tom Hanks tells you as much. He's like, well, you're my publisher and yeah, my oh, boss. Yeah, yeah. It's like dialogue like that. And this is the most brilliant 
movie that's going to save America. Uh, I mean, and, and I thought he was tremendously underutilized, playing a, a directed to play a gravelly voiced. He has a cartoon kind of, voice. Um, that well, he, cartoon it, voice. Tom Hanks' performance in this is is. Um, shame, shameful. <laughs> it's astoundingly It's a bad. disgrace. I think this is the worst acting I've he's, seen him do. He's literally like, yeah, well, what should we do about the post? <laughs> it, it, he is. It's it, it's I don't know who approved it. Uh, and, and not only that, but Meryl Streep plays this wishy-washy woman, which, uh, I mean, <clears throat> the, I don't think the original, the, the character she was playing was supposed to come off that wishy-washy. She's so kind of just She's like, like breathy, okay. breathy and nervous, like, oh, should we publish? Um, yes, we should. <laughs> yes, we should. And the whole crux of the movie is kind of like, the, the, you know, is she going to decide to publish these or not? And it's, it comes off like a whim. Like, yeah, oh, it does. I'm it comes off as a whim. Like, okay. like it, it, it's almost like it could have gone either way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, they, and she didn't really care either way. There was no like defining moment where it was like, oh, we have to do this because blah, blah, blah. She ends up feeling pressured, be, uh, uh, morally pressured by her own, you know, where she's like, I, I think we ought to. But there is the moment where she said, let's do it. It, it almost feels the slightest bit fli <laughs> uh, flippant. Like, like they yeah. shot it both ways and decided later which one they would do. <laughs> and so naturally Nixon was going to go after them for that. And the sort of the last half hour, which is very rushed, is about, a, it's a First Amendment Supreme Court ruling. Um, that it was kind of like joint Washington Post and New York Times. Yeah. That and also then, sounds like a more interesting. And by the way, we spent we spent half the movie in this really slow, boring film about IPOs yeah. and banking and and like establishing these characters that you didn't care about and plot lines you didn't care about. And then suddenly we get the interesting stuff in the last thirty minutes, There's, and then it's still not that interesting. Yeah, the stakes aren't clear, and it's not like Nick. They they have these shots of like Nixon's silhouette, and they play the tapes. It's such cheese ball. Where he, yeah, he's like he, like you're looking through the White House window, and he's like head to yeah. the back of the head to the camera. He's like, never he's like, talking his face. He's talking on the phone, and you hear like the. Like, I don't like this New York Times. Not even about the Post. New York Times, <laughs> and, yeah. and it's like. It, it doesn't feel like if there was some other pressure, any sort of thing that made it feel like there was a real risk. It should to have publishing. been a documentary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's not a. To, to, because to dramatize it just makes it goofy looking. Yeah. And yeah, I, like for some reason, Meryl Streep, like because she is in like period drama costume, she, like, like everybody's like, oh, we gotta go out and see that. Like, she's gonna do a real commanding performance. I'm like, no, she's boring. It was actually one she of her worst it. performances. Yeah, she yeah she's so phoned in. And uh, and then at the end. And well, you well see that was it. like, was it Natalie Portman who played Jackie O? Yeah. It was just a horrible At least performance. she was bold. She was over the top in that. She yeah. was like doing her real Jackie O voice. Yeah. But at the, at the end, there's. Almost comparable to Tom Hanks. This yeah, one. yeah, yeah, just cartoonish. <laughs> but at, at the end, there's that line that you see in every trailer. Which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, journalism is the first draft of history, and you know, so it's raw. <laughs> and of course, if you watch like any of the press, it's all about like, oh, this movie was really we we thought this movie was really important to make because Trump doesn't like the news. And it's like, but it's not comparable. He's not suing anybody. No, he's it's, not. It's, it's yeah. not even close. There's nothing that even even relates to. It's like I know, yeah. like. You know, you could you could probably make a good movie that has a commentary on Trump, but this is not the movie. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it was it was a movie that came out of a, a cheese factory. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm asking your advice, Bob, not your permission. But you can't do this. The legacy of the company is at stake. What will happen if we don't publish? We will lose. The country will lose. What are you going to do, Mrs. Graham?